Good evening and welcome to Sports Talk Live. I hope you enjoy today's guests. Now on the show today, I have the first team boys soccer coach, Mr. Richard Menti, the first team captain and vice captain, Jason Mabuza and Vusim Pofu. We have first team players, Marcus Cavallo, Mwedi Tike and Marvin Monjane. Welcome to the show, gents. How's everyone doing? Starting with you, coach. I'm good, thank you. Great to be here. Welcome to the show. Jason, how are you doing? Um, good, thanks, sir. Vusi? I'm all right, thank you very much, sir. Hope you're coping as well. I'm good, thank you. Marcus? I'm good, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for being on the show. Marvin? Um, I'm good, sir. Thank you for the invitation. A pleasure. I'm ready. I'm fine, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Only a pleasure. All right. So, of course, today we're talking all things soccer. I want you to sit back, enjoy, and just um, reminisce on what would have been a good season and um, the 2019 season and, and, and so forth. Now, Coach, I just want to find out from you, what is keeping you motivated during these uncertain times um, and knowing that we won't have a soccer season? Um, I think it's, it came as a shock to me. Um, mm. I think it came to a shock to everyone because it just came out of nowhere. Um, Motivation-wise, not much has changed. I still keep myself motivated, still training, mm. doing extra courses with um, USA Soccer at the moment. And, mm. yeah, I, it's actually a good thing to have the time off that we've had. I've managed to implement a couple of lifestyle changes that I've been looking to do for some time that would have been mm. hard during coaching and and everything now i've had the time to to get that done sure so some positives obviously we'd love to play sport but we can't mm. but there are other things to keep us busy during this yes, time indeed. yes indeed all right jason how have you uh, been keeping uh, sort of motivated what's been keeping you motivated um motivation uh, motivation wise i haven't been really motivated but then i just look forward to next year and what's going to happen next year because obviously next year new opportunities yeah but um so far i'm just focused on my box focused on getting where i want to be next year mm. and yeah basically right now it's my box okay yeah. all right marcus what has been keeping you motivated there in mozambique yeah, so it's not easy to keep ourselves motivated during these times but mm. i i think if we think that it's going to, the pandemic, it's going to end soon and we're going to be back to our routines and our normal life after this. I think mm -hmm. that's what is keeping me motivated and obviously my goals. Sure. Okay. That's beautiful. Vusi? Uh, yeah, it's been, it's been tough, but, you know, there's, not, there's, not, there's nothing we can really do or say. So, honestly, motivation-wise, like Jason said, it's the books. Mm -hmm. Mm. That's 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 all we have at the moment, our scholars. So I think, seeing as all opportunities are gone, or well not not gone, not in our power, but yeah, might as well just put all my energy into my books and yes. hope for the best. Okay, all right, Mwedi, what has been keeping you motivated? Uh, so I know it's been difficult for everyone, mm. but I'm I'm trying to train to practice. I go around, I go jog with Marvin mm. sometimes. Yeah. Okay. All I'm right. everything to keep myself on, in shape, sir. So. All right. That's beautiful. Marvin? I see Marvin is looking the other way. Um, well, it has been difficult for us during this pandemic, and I'm trying to keep, um, keep doing my best so mm. I can reach my goals. Mm. But it's really been difficult. Catching up with school and practice. Yeah. So I'm trying my. Okay. All right. Now I just want to find out. This question is for you, Jason. Um, now you were recently voted captain of the team. So what plans did you sort of have in mind, or goals that you wanted to set for the team for the season? Um, goals. I think so would agree with me. Goal wise, we wanted to aim for a higher place in the St. Peter's tournament this year. Mm. Than last year, and um, what I wanted to bring to the team is togetherness because we're sort of divided. 
last year we came out, we came together a little bit. That's why we played better. But then mm. uh, this year, I feel like if we could come more together and focus on one play style together, sure. uh, we could achieve way more than we we think that we can achieve. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Okay. And then Vusi, now you're the vice captain of the team and Jason has just told me what the goal um, or his goal was. Um, what 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 would you have sort of added um, if we had soccer season and what were your goals? Huh? Uh, I could definitely agree with Jason there. But personally speaking, I think my goals, what I want to add to the team would be uh, a victory over Uplands and definitely St. Peter's Tour, seeing mm. as we uh, unfortunately got taken out in the semifinals. That mm. just proved that if we can go to the semifinals, we can definitely make it to the finals. So just that, just that to basically build the team together into giving us that extra push mm. to push through, make it to the finals, and when we get there, play mm. our, our hearts out and, and hope for the best. So, yeah, that's what I was hoping for the team. Okay. Um, now, Coach, I know you're very passionate about uh, Pendron soccer. Um, what were your goals for, for the season? What did you want to achieve? Um, that's a big one. Uh, we normally take it game by game. Mm. That's the focus when we go into any season. We don't really look at the bigger picture, even though it's in the back of your minds. Um, you need to focus on who you're playing week in, week out. Mm. And that's the focus. If you're winning every week, good. The job is done. But uh, my aim was obviously a final at St. Peter's mm. this season. And, and of course, a win over Uplands. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like they say, football's a beautiful sport, but it can hurt you. Mm -hmm. And um, that happened to us against Uplands last year. Mm -hmm. It was a very close game, but we lost with two free kicks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just wanted us to finish, get a final, yeah. win or lose, and just take on Uplands. Yeah. Okay. All right. No. So going back to 2019, um, how do you think the team played and... What were the positives? I want to start with you, Marcus. Oh, I think the team played well. We started by reaching the final at Camp Discovery, which mm. was good. Mm. And uh, we managed to win a lot of league matches, even though we didn't win against Uplands. But, mm. but I, think, I think the team was well organized. We had a lot of individual quality. Mm. But yeah, as Jason said, we need, we need to be more together and yeah. yeah sure sure and jason um yeah positives from 2019 uh positives from 2019 i think we were a great team destined for great things but then the to togetherness parts kind of stopped us from reaching that goal and uh i, f I feel like we proved it when we played against lhs when we drew that game we were playing mm. our hardest, we were playing together, we were just playing our game. And mm. yeah, I feel, I feel like if we just unlock that again, mm. we can be unstoppable. Okay. Mwedi? Yes, sir. I think, let's say, I've been here since 2017, and I think, let's say, it was the best year mm. of, like, the first team, because mm. we achieved so many great things. So. Sure. And we just need to work hard. We just needed to work hard, work hard, work hard. Mm. Yeah, but it was a good year. Mm. It was a fantastic year for me and for my teammates. Sure. Okay. Um, Vusi, what can you remember about um, last year? The positives, yeah? Um, last year. Last year, you know, we every team starts off rough, but I can say definitely building up to St. Peter's, we definitely, we, we changed our attitudes, you know. Um, mm. I remember for one game, I'm not sure which game it was, but I know you were watching the game okay. where you watched the team make about like 17 passes and they went on to score a goal. Mm. That just, for me, that just proved that, you know, the team has, they, they, we've, we've, we've connected, we're coming together and even on the St. Peter's tour, when we, when we started to struggle again, Mm. That connectivity started to started to start to connect, started to link, and mm. once again, we started, you know, 
we changed our mindsets and we started playing well. Mm. Scored a few goals. We had some. We had a good keeper. You know, it was it was enjoyable, and sure. I can say we definitely did have a lot of talent in the team, and it would have been nice to see that again this year. Okay, um, Marvin, what can you remember about the 2019 season? Um, well, compared to the other years, I'm not sure what this year. We usually used to stay in the bottom of the league, but we came out third. Camp mm. Discovery and St. Peter's were our major highlights, and yeah. that proves that we have great talent in our school. Mm. And we just need to keep committing to training because that's very important, mm. not missing practice. No. We improved. Um, we didn't rely a lot on the individuals. Mm. Everyone was giving more percent on the field. Mm. and playing together and becoming yeah. more friends. Sure, yeah. sure. Beautiful answer there. Great... Mm. All right. Now, Coach, this one is for you. Of course, now you're dealing with first-team players and, um, you know, there might be, yes, the positives, but you also have your challenges. What can you say um, were your biggest challenges in, in making sure that the team plays according to, to how you want them to play? Oh, that's a good question. Um, a lot of trial and error. Mm. Uh, first, we had to build trust with each other. I mean, I had to earn my players' respect. Mm. And they had to earn my respect on the field as well. Uh, Marvin just mentioned now, now, I think we can touch on that. Mm. Um, training, everyone played together. Mm. Uh, I tried to, the whole goal when we picked the team was not to pick a team of individuals. Sure. I tried to pick the best team mm. that I could find for the school. Mm. And um, I wanted every player not to be part of a team, but to be a team. Mm. So everyone knows their role who plays for me. They know what their role is, why they're there, and, and what our game plan is. And I think just the way we trained is probably the biggest factor in how we performed. Mm. Um, a lot of coaches, you know, everyone's got their own philosophy and, and methodology when it comes to coaching mm. uh, a lot of people are very drill based mm. in their training sessions and sure. i'm a very i'm very firm on simulating games at practice mm. so i'm very big on formation i'm very big on structure and the boys know that because i drill it at every practice and we normally start off on a half a field we'll have 8v8 and we'll do a structure drill where the ball's just moving and, and the guys are shifting lines Mm. And then we'll progress it and take a restriction away where the defenders can now win the ball, win it, and give it straight back. Mm. And then we'll progress it again. And then we'll let the, the defenders win it. Now the attackers can try win it mm. until it becomes a full-on game. So by doing that, I mean, you're doing all the things you could do in a drill. You, mm. You're working on your passing. You're working on movement on and off the ball. You're communicating. You're working together as a team. Your spatial awareness is better. And together, you're just building team chemistry. And I think that's one of the reasons why we perform so well. Because when it comes to match day, you're doing that at, at practice mm. twice a week for four hours. Mm. When it comes to playing a game, you know what you have to do. You know where your players are. You know where everyone is on the field. You guys know how to play. Mm. I think that was a, a, a big part of our success. Mm. Okay, so the challenges um, in, in, in sort of managing all these players, what, what, would you, what were the biggest challenges for you? I think uh, some egos, <laughs> trying to sort out a couple of egos. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, we disciplined them. Mm. It worked. I mm. think they finally got, got the picture. Um, if they weren't listening, you know, unfortunately they got taken out the team and that kind of changed their pers the perspective on on what we want from them and mm. Mm. that came back but i think the only major challenge would be resources mm. when it comes to training um maybe a bit more equipment and stuff would have been a bit better for the boys okay all right um now, the team actually went to St. Peter's. Okay, obviously, it's the St. Peter's Festival. Yeah. You guys did well there. Um, what in this tournament sort of helped you? I just want to start with you now, um, uh, Vusi. Um, what, what helped me? Well, 
basically for me it was it was my friends and it was the coach um mm. coach Minty because um during the tournament that's when I actually uh had my that's when I got my knee injury and mm. I couldn't really play but I had my coach and my my friends pushing me you know getting me to the end and that's when you know that's when the realization hit that you know focus on what needs to be done now cry later basically mm. um i knew what needed to be done mm. for the team i knew what role i had to play and i didn't want to let the team down so you know getting pushing and playing our hearts out we had a few good games where we won 3-1 4-3 mm. you know and with those games i can from my me remembering it wasn't individual brilliance. It wasn't give the ball to Marcus and let him go score or something. It was, you know, let's mm. let's work it from the back. Mm. Let's talk to each other. Mm. Let's let's make spaces. You could hear it on the field. Like when we kept quiet, we'd always just spark up again. And you could hear us talking, talking, and boom, the goal came. And I think that's what that's what I took out most from the tournament the, um, the festival. Mm. How we can play together yeah. and how we are a good team through our wins and yeah okay that's beautiful jason um what what kept me up during the tournament is the passion that i saw from my teammates every mm -hmm. time i caught the ball and i looked up and you don't just have to look for a pause you just they they tell you i'm here and then mm -hmm. you just go ahead and pass it so the passion mm -hmm. be like from the boys and everything like for my teammate next to me playing at center back with Moedi mm -hmm. used to mm -hmm. talk to me a lot like hey watch out like if I'm sure. not looking like watch out and that kept me going and it kept me up because mm -hmm. yeah okay um Marcus what can you remember from that tournament uh, I think it was a great experience because we played against big schools mm -hmm. great players and we could see that we have a lot to improve because mm -hmm. Yeah, they were good. They, some of the schools were better than us, but mm -hmm. I think we managed to play, uh, play uh, to give them a match, mm -hmm. and the team worked together, mm -hmm. and that's that's the best we can we can have we can take for the from the tournament. Okay, Marvin, we're just talking about the St. Peter's tournament um, and how it helped everyone. How did it help you? Oh, well, last year I didn't because I was away on um, national. Team. Oh yes, yes. Um, yes. Well, in 2018, um, I played. Well, it didn't go so well. We mm. lost every match. Uh, it looks like the team improved mm. in the tournament. They went to the semi-final. That's a big step. That's a huge yes. step, actually. That mm. shows the the work that we're putting in, and they performed very well. And uh, I was delightful to hear that. Yeah, it really pleased me. Mm, that's beautiful. So, yeah. Um, Mwedi, I don't know if you can hear me, um, but what could you take from um, the St. Peter's Festival last year? Um, it gave me experience. Mm. And now I know that together we can achieve more. Sure. If we stick together, we can achieve more. Mm. Yeah. Okay, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. All right. Um, I just want to now touch base with the following guys. So Mwedi and Marcus, you were selected to be part of the training squad for that uh, Mozambican under national, sorry, under 20 national team. Um, how was the experience for you guys, starting with you, Marcus? Oh, so it was it was a great experience. The vibe mm. was different. I think me and Mwedi, we felt like we were professional players. We had mm. like three coaches, mm. one coach to set the drills, the assistant coach and the principal coach. Mm. And the our teammates, they were ready. We could see that they were stronger than us. I think mm. that was a good experience because we can improve. We, we learned a lot from just three practices, but I think we learned a lot. Mm. And also the coach, he was a soccer player. He used okay. to play in Portugal. So mm. it was brilliant. Sir. Mm. Okay. Mwedi? Uh, it was a fantastic moment sir, for, mm. in my life. 
mm. it was a good experience because I learned that I need to work hard to achieve mm. my goals. Mm. And mm. I saw those players, they're good. Like, they were strong, faster. Mm. And yeah, it gave me experience mm. and knowledge to know what what should I do mm. in the future. Mm. Yeah, if okay. I want to be at the level. Sure. No, beautiful, Jens. Um, now, Marvin, I'm coming to you now. Now, you were selected to play in the under-17 Kosafa Cup for Mozambique. Now, I know your country reached the final. Um, I, I saw the videos on YouTube as well, you playing. That's that's a brilliant achievement. Talk us through your experience um, during that under-17 Kosafa Cup um, tournament. Um, well, first, I struggled a lot because my friends were not there. Mm. It was they, sometimes it's uh, you find it difficult to meet new people because mm. different grounds. But yeah, it was it was a nice experience. Um, I was in a professional environment. Mm. Three coaches, um, mm. concentration. Very early, they used to take our phones. Mm. We're yeah, we're close to the outside world. We're just focused on winning the Kozafa Kozafa tournament. Mm. Um, we went to the final, but losing it was uh, it, it was bad, you know, still sad mm. to this day because mm. it was the second time we was go to a final after mm. like 20, 25 years. So mm. it would be amazing to win it. Mm. And luckily, some players received me very well, and mm. I enjoyed my stay there. The hospitality mm. was good, and... I really enjoy to represent the country and represent Henren and mm. sporting, knowing that they have great players. Yeah. No, well done, well done um, on your on those achievements and being selected there. Now, Jason and Vusi, you also do athletics. Um, I know you also play first team rugby. Vusi, also first team hockey. How do you now balance your schoolwork and still play so much sport, starting with you, Jason? Um, balancing schoolwork and sports um, for me hasn't really been a problem because I've been doing that since I don't know when because I was, I've been a sports player since like my whole life. Sure, but it's not a problem because you you just need to go to practice, go to every practice because mm -hmm. being active also helps your brain. Yes. And after practice, you just take a shower when you get home, then you focus on your books. Mm -hmm. So if you if you stay strict strictly on the on that um, schedule. You'll be okay. It's it's not that much of a, a hassle to focus on both things at once. So. Okay. All right. Vusi. Um. Yeah. I can't. I won't say it was. Uh, it was tough. Of course, when it comes to studying, at times, yeah, you, know, you get lazy and tired. But mm. honestly speaking, I personally feel like I managed to balance it because you know, you're at school for education. That's mm. something I made sure I never I never left out. That's why mm. I need an education. But I know with that, I enjoy my sports. I I truly love my sports. So yeah. I always made sure that if I'm going to make sure that I, I treat my sports like it's everything, I will mm. always drag my education with. Mm. And like I always, one thing I like to, I always mention my friends, you know, I personally feel like I've got responsible friends and for example, like Jason, he would, you know, if I would, if I may be focusing too much on my sports, you know, he would always say, you know, mm -hmm. don't forget, we've got a test tomorrow or next yeah, week. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he'd always, mm -hmm. he'd always make sure that, yeah, you know. So, honestly speaking, it was not a problem for me. I, I managed to cope with everything and I loved it all. So, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. Jason, coming back to you now. Last year, you went to Ireland with uh, Jason Taylor um, for rugby. I just want you to please talk me through that experience for you. How was it for you playing um, in an in international um, rugby match or matches? Um, the experience, uh, at first it was scary. Mm. But it was really scary because um, I, I missed my flight and I had to fly <laughs> at home. And it was the first time... Of like flying alone overseas mm. so that was scary but then once i got there i just felt a different vibe my teammates were welcoming everyone was just there and we were gelling like we've been friends for a long time mm. so 
and playing rugby that's like yes it's very cool like, it's very <laughs> cool but um, then but then it, it was something different and i can say that i came back from that tour with something new and i i know that my playing style would benefit mm, from mm. That tour. so it was a lovely tour and yeah yeah, so you're not going to get away from this one. Now, we want to find out why you missed your flight. <laughs> oh, so um, a week before, I actually misplaced my passport. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in Pretoria uh, mm-hmm. on the day of the um, of the flight, and I was trying to get my passport in Pretoria. And I got it like two hours after the flight, so I had to wait for the next day. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, no, thank you for that. All right, now, Marcus, Mwedi, and Marvin. Now, you play for Sporting Portugal. Um, I just want to find out how that helps you improve your skills because you also play um, for for Pendrin's first team. I just want to find out how the whole sporting structure um, is helping you, Uh, starting with you, Marcus. Uh, So I think to play soccer, to be at the top and to be a good player, the consistency is the key and mm. in sporting we play we practice three days per week i think just just the pra- practicing three days per week help us and then mm. the drills that that we do there mm. uh it helps us technically physically and then i i think it helped us to play better for school as well mm. we, we've been preparing ourselves since the beginning of since term one and then term three, I think we are fit to mm. play to play and to help the school. Okay, beautiful. Mwedi. Uh, so I think that it helps us because when we have sporting and we have school training uh, practice, mm. we play every day. And that that makes us improve like it makes us get comfortable with the ball. Okay. We get comfortable with the ball. Mm, mm. So we 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 don't become like afraid of making mistakes mm. or yeah, we we are too comfortable with the ball. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Marvin, how has sporting helped you as well? Um well practicing every day is the the key to being a good player. And and that's improved me technically, like Marcus said. And they have great facilities, great drills, mm. and they are involved with our daily lifestyle, and they care about us as us as human beings. And that's actually important because mm. your behavior outside the field also counts yes. on the field. It counts. So, mm. uh, sporting has has done great for us like taking us to national team, trips to Portugal, mm. and that's only giving us more and more experience to become good players. And mm. taking that that mindset to the first team is always good, sharing knowledge of the game with um, with the other players. I've shared knowledge with Fusi. I'm not saying that I didn't improve, but I shared something that I know with him, and I think he did it. And, yeah, I'm... It helped. It, it has helped me getting more involved with people yes. who don't have the game. So mm. that's really good. Okay, wonderful. Now, coach, you've been working with the boys for a few years now. Okay, um, I just want to find out from you: Have you seen any improvements? What What can you say um, from from when you started? What can you see actually from when you started until now? Um, when we started, it. 2018, if I'm correct. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we struggled to find a balance in the team. It was, um, it was just a lot of individuals. Mm-hmm. There wasn't a lot of communication between the players. Um, people didn't really want to work as a team. Mm-hmm. If some player went forward, mm-hmm. he wouldn't go back to help out his team. And that mm-hmm. was a big problem we had in the first season. Sure. Um, I, I think Marvin knows we've had a few um, chats about that back in 2018, where he would go forward and take on a few guys, but then if he lost the ball, he would never get back. Mm. And um, the changes happened. I'm very open with my team. They're very open with me, and mm. we speak to each other. I think that's a big, a big key. 
mm. to our success as well is that we chat and we talk and mm. it's never just my way or the highway mm. you know if there's a problem and a player is struggling in a mm. position i'll speak mm. to him and we'll try find a way maybe we can just move him into a different position give him a different role yeah and um last year it showed the guys were playing some proper football and mm. I was very impressed with Marvin. I know how good he is technically mm. as a footballer. Um, but I think it was one game. He, he lost the ball very high up the field. Mm. And then a few seconds later, he's down at the left back with the Cassio winning the ball back. Mm. And then he's going back up the field. And that's something I wanted to see. Everyone working together for each other. Sure. Uh, and the discipline was improved a lot. The team just improved in general. Mm. It, was, it was great. Yeah, it's it's beautiful to hear because yeah, I, I I watched a few of your matches last um, last year and the team looked proper. You know, um, it would have been an interesting season um, this year. So yeah, yeah, well done on your part there. Thank you. Now, Marcus, all right. Um, I know last year was a a nice year for you. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you were the top goal scorer for the first team. How did that make you feel, and how hard did you have to work? And I mean, I mean, to to achieve um, those goals, what what did you have to do? No, so it was it was a great feeling personally because I, I was the top goal scorer, and it was also good to help the team because we won mm -hmm. a lot of matches. Mm -hmm. And I remember that the holidays, the holidays before third term, I went to practice athletics here in Moz with with my coach, mm -hmm. and it helped me a lot. I was fit, even though I got injured, but mm. I was fit and uh, I think I did well for the beginning of the season. Mm. Yeah, no, that's beautiful. Now, gentlemen, um, before I say goodbye, coach, I know this would have been your final season with the team. Um, and I know now you, you, you're moving to Joburg to take up a new role. What message do you have for the Pendrant boys um, going forward? I've actually got um, two messages. So I'll do one for, for the boys in general. Is sure. Just keep disciplined, work hard, study hard. Mm. If you don't make it into the first team, mm. it, it doesn't mean you're not good enough. The room is just full. The door's still open. Mm. So just remember that. Just keep working hard. You will get there. Mm. And... Um, the other message for all of you guys, for all my, my football boys and everyone I've managed to coach, it's been a privilege and it's been a pleasure helping you boys. No, thank you, coach. Um, thank you for your hard work and yeah, all the best um, for you for the future. I know you're gonna shine wherever you, you, you go. And thank you, boys, for joining me on Sports Talk Live. It's been a privilege um, hosting you. Um, yeah, so may you have a wonderful evening and I'll see you at school tomorrow.